Good morning, everyone, and I do apologize for the shaky cam. Yes, I know. <laughs> More than one uh, comment uh, saying how it could be steadier. I do apologize for that. Uh, welcome to the early morning Bible reading show. I haven't decided what to call this yet. Early morning reading show. Um, start of the morning Bible reading show. Well, thank you for joining me early this morning. It is 6 30. Uh, in the morning here in Cambridge, uh, there's frost. There's actually frost in the ground. Uh, you can see on the bicycles there, show you there's frost on the seats. Uh, must have been really chilly last night. Yeah. And it is Thursday today. Uh, what's it, the 15th of April? It's already the middle of the month. But a really beautiful morning. Wow, check it out. Really is lovely today. The cows are off over there in the distance. So, oh, they're coming this direction. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe I'll sit over here somewhere so as to be out of their way. They seem to be walking towards here. How interesting. Really can't tell their pattern, you know, where they walk towards. Every day they're in a different spot. Yeah, here they come. <laughs> Alright then, today we are in 1 Timothy 4, I think. Let's see, ah, oh, the ground. The ground looks frosty. Timothy chapter 4. I had one of my, uh, well, I had a church annual meeting yesterday. Uh, it was interesting. It was interesting having that perspective of how the year went uh, from the perspective of the leaders and all that they're doing. Oh, no, the cow is walking towards me. Okay. All right. It's actually coming towards me. <laughs> oh, hey. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I was saying, it, it was uh, interesting, it was encouraging, you know, uh, hearing how the church has, how do I put this, all well, struggled together. It's not been an easy year with coronavirus, uh, but I think, you know, a lot of se things that are done in ministry is unseen. And it is encouraging when, you know, uh, leaders open up and just tell us how things have been uh, from their perspective. And we're able to empathize, we're able to struggle together, we're able to support one another. And I think that's what happened yesterday. I think that was uh, just very helpful. Yep. Okay, I think the cow is... My guess is, actually that's like, uh, like the leader cow or something. I think that comes and kind of clears the path. For, for the tinier cows. I think they all look the same size. Anyway, where were we? I think 1 Timothy chapter 4. Yikes. Are you 1 Timothy chapter 4? Okay, here it is. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for the leaders in our church which, uh, which strive to uh, serve us so well in 
teaching us and reminding us of the gospel. We pray that they too might be encouraged in Christ to continue preaching this gospel, that they might be uh, filled with that uh, joy and with that drive to, to do this simply for you. Uh, may be pleased with their service, with their sacrifice, and please would you sustain them such that you'll find them faithful on that final day. Uh, for us as well, help us to be supportive, help us to strive together as one person uh, for the sake of the gospel. Uh, uh, for today, help me with this reading. Uh, help me to uh, read it, to understand it clearly, uh, to want to obey it. Uh, help us all to listen to it. Uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, I think it's safe now. All right then, uh, the Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created uh, to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, brought up in the truths of the faith, and of the good teaching that you have followed have nothing to do with godless myths and old wise tales rather train yourself to be godly for physical training is of some value but godliness has value for all things holding promise for both the present life and the life to come this is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance and for this, we labor and strive, that we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, and especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public's reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers hmm. yeah i think verse 16 um i think it summarizes uh, this chapter you know watch your life and doctrine closely there's that aspect of your walk and your talk you know watch your life you know how you live out this gospel but also your doctrine what is it that you're holding on to as the gospel your essential teachings that you're holding on to and you, that you're teaching as part of your responsibility uh, timothy he, paul is giving this instruction to timothy to hold these two together his life and his doctrine his walk and his talk and you see this flowing uh to and fro in this ch chapter so he begins with the important uh uh, well, the context. Ah, okay, All right. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, lovely dog. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> ah, I scare so easily. Yeah. <laughs> ah, 
Okay, so the problem of false teaching. Well, false teaching in the beginning of chapter 4 is um, verse 1, some will clearly abandon the faith, follow the deceiving spirits. Hello, hi doggy. Oh, uh, all the dogs are coming to me today. Hello. <laughs> and follow deceiving spirits taught by demons, such teachings come through hypocritical liars. So there will be false teaching, and these false te teachings will, you know, will be through hypocritical liars, verse 2, whose consciences have been seared with a hot iron. And this is such a sad thing, such a worrying thing, that in competition almost with those who are teaching the gospel, people like Timothy, people like the leaders in the church, there will be people who will be teaching a false gospel, you know, and you know, you would think that you know they'll have a conscience that says, you know, this is wrong. They shouldn't be doing this, but it's been seared as with a hot iron. And um, uh, Timothy is to what's he supposed to do? Um, well, on the one hand, Paul just warning him that these things are going to happen. You know, they're going to be these false teachers, and he describes them in long detail. You know, for a few verses, he says they forbid people to marry in order to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving. So it sounds like some kind of ascetic lifestyle, you know, that it sounds, it sounds like, oh, very holy almost. This kind of teaching, oh, you know, if you don't do this and you deny yourself, you know, you'll be a better Christian. Uh, but what you're denying is the goodness of God. Verse 4, for everything God created is good. Nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. So it's denial of good things of God. It's not talking about not doing some bad things, but it's actually taking the gospel and making it, things seem bad, which are good. You know, saying don't get married, don't eat certain foods, to give this impression of holiness. And so, you know, again, you think false teaching, you think people, you know, teach weird stuff. But these people seem very, very religious. Yeah, there you go. And they seem to be, have this air of holiness about them. And Paul says, you know, everything is consecrated. Everything is made holy through God's word and prayer. And so Timothy is meant to point these things out. Verse 6, if you point these things out to the brothers, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, brought up in the truths of the faith and of the good teaching you follow. So pointing things out, you know, uh, brought up in the truths, the good teaching that you have followed. So Timothy, okay, all right, here comes another cop. I seem to be very popular today. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, with all the animals. Yeah, all the animals seem to be coming towards me today. Hi. I lost my place. So Timothy is supposed to be following these truths that he himself has been brought up in. Let's see, where are we? We're in Timothy chapter 4. There you are. And he's supposed to almost... So, so he's supposed to point this out, but he's also supposed to follow them himself. Do you notice that? So he, he's meant to display and to teach this teaching in his own life, he says, verse 7, have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. And he compares, him, compares that to physical exercise, like going to the gym. And he says, that's good. You know, verse, uh, verse 8, that's good. But really, godliness is something that will last till the life to come. So that kind of aspect of training yourself. And I guess the same way that people go to the gym every day and they train themselves, you know, they do, I don't know what they do, I don't go to the gym, <laughs> but, but they maybe do weights or they, they're training their muscles, you know, it's a train your spiritual muscles, I guess. You know, every day there's, a, there's an aspect of training and a progress in godliness that comes from just knowing the Bible and knowing the truths of the Bible. Verse 9, this is a trustworthy saying, that deserves full acceptance and for this we labor and strive again that kind that aspect of uh, progress and striving we have put our hope in the living god who is the savior of all men especially those who believe and so he moves on to the teaching aspect so the talk 
uh, aspect of the walk, you know, verse 11 command, and teach these things, and do not let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in speech and in life and love, in faith and in purity. So he's meant to, verse 11, command and teach these things. He's meant to talk about these things, but he's also meant to walk in them. And that's the way that he deals with criticism. You know, people look down on him because, you know, you seem rather young. You know, who are you to be telling us who are older, who maybe have um, more experience than you? And Paul says, rather than just uh, teach these things, he's meant to, that, that, that is his job. He's meant to teach these things and command them. But also, uh, he's meant to set that example in his own life, in his own walk, as he talks about this gospel. And so, devote yourself to public reading of Scripture. Um, I guess it's kind of like what we're doing here, in your public reading. Well, public as in in front of these cows. But I guess also in churches, you know, the bit where someone reads the Bible out loud, that I think is a very good example and application of verse 13, to devote ourselves to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching, and also to teaching someone, actually helping us to ex understand clearly and to apply everything that we are reading in the Bible. Do not neglect your gift, verse 14, which was given you through the prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. And yeah, so we come back full circle to verse 16, that walk and that talk. Uh, both are such good things to progress in in our lives, you know, that everyone may see your progress. You know, progress is not saying that you suddenly come out with a degree or, you know, you suddenly understand and are able to give this huge talk. It's just, well, progress just means every day, but bit by bit, you know, you're taking a step further in your walk, a step further in your talk, in your growth, in, you know, loving Jesus and living according to his word. Yeah, okay. All right, with that, I'm going to end with a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you see our progress, you know our growth from the inside out. But in a way, we are able to see this as well. And Lord, um, for our sakes, you know, for the encouragement of our friends, our brothers and sisters in church, for their sakes as well, you know, help us to grow. Help us to grow in our faithfulness and our love for you. That they too um, might want to walk and to talk in this gospel that you've given us in faithfulness and love for the lord jesus christ we pray amen amen take care have a good day bye, -bye.